Hey, bulls and bears, before we get into the financial economic news today, here's some footage I caught in my backyard. Now, this was shot through a screen, so it's going to be a little bit, a little bit blurry, but you can see it pretty good. And I told you crime was going to increase. And here I have a smash and grab right in my own backyard. This critter right here, the squirrel, got into our pumpkin. Now, this must be the same critter that's been eating my tomatoes that's been eating some oranges up my tree. I don't have very big oranges, but they eat them as soon as they turn into little green uh, you know, oranges. And uh, also some lemons were taken off my tree. And new other things that I tried to grow, like herbs and stuff like that, have been getting eaten. And I think it's this critter right here. Now this was not a jack-o'-lantern, right? This was not carved. So this little critter made the hole and now he's, or she, this critter's chomping away at some pumpkin seeds. Smash and grab right in my backyard. Look at that. Right? And this pumpkin was just going to go to waste, you know, so um, I don't really mind it. But I think it's the same critter. I can't grow anything in my backyard unless I put it in a big cage or in sort of some sort of protective environment. <laughs> he keeps on looking around. He doesn't want to stay inside the pumpkin too long. I think he's afraid the predator is going to come get him. All right, everybody. So I've got my blue blockers on today, so I'm being good. Let's get into some financial economic news. We've got a lot of things to cover today, a lot of topics that I want to get into. And with the rising food prices, you know, we've encouraged people here to try to grow their own food. It is very, very challenging, especially when you have critters like this. But the less dependent you are on some other third party or some other source, the supply chain, uh, the better off will be. Now, people have asked me why I have not left California. Well, when you look to move somewhere right now, home prices are really high wherever you go. I was lucky enough to buy here in California back in 2010. So if I sold now, I'll probably end up paying more and have a higher tax base in some other state than I am right here in California. Now, California has got a lot of problems, absolutely, but we don't have to worry about freezing to death in the winter. In fact, this was just taken yesterday, as you can see, uh, no sign of any snow here where I'm at. And I have relatives in some northern states, including where I'm from, back in Michigan. And a lot of them are telling me, you know, that they're paying much, much higher heating costs. And uh, more people are looking to get firewood. And we're seeing a big demand and surge uh, for, for firewood right now. Let's take a look at this article. And there's a few reports out on this with the rising cost of firewood, just like everything else is going up. But it's going to be very difficult for a lot of these people that are going to go to firewood and a lot of people are installing wood burning stoves. It's going to be more difficult to get home insurance because that increases the fire hazard. And probably a lot of you listening today have seen your insurance prices go up, not just for automobile, but home insurance prices going up. With the general cost of inflation, you're going to see things like insurance going up. Even the cost of uh, gas and transportation costs, energy costs, are going to affect the companies that have any sort of transport or that pay any sort of employees to go and drive around and handle claims. You're going to see higher insurance costs, of course, higher home or building costs. Lumber costs also pay a part of that. you got more severe weather pattern, patterns. So insurance is really causing a lot of pain for a few people uh, that I know. I've been seeing it go up here also personally. Uh, but this economy is a ticking time bomb. Now, the main news sources out there, they're seeming to try to make it sound like everything is on the up and up, everything is recovering, and that you should just be looking at the stock market, trying to invest, if there's no other problems to try to prepare for. Well, this economy, I think we're going to wake up one day and we're going to see a whole different world. Once this manipulation is done, uh, once there's a policy change or once somebody drops the ball, um, you're going to see a whole new world. And it's going to be a pretty pretty dangerous world as far as I can see because we have so many people here that are dependent on payouts and dependent on some sort of assistance or support. And it's no surprise that we're seeing rising crime. And uh, I'll be happy to have a pumpkin getting eaten up by a critter versus uh, you know some of these mobs you know that we've been seeing in some of the cities they're going to be coming out to the country they're going to be coming to your house um we haven't seen anything yet this economic collapse this 
entire economy is based on funny money, uh, money printing, rescue programs. All right. As far as I'm concerned, this is a huge illusion. Uh, not just the economy the way it is right now, but this entire system is an illusion. And I think ultimately we're going to have to go through some sort of economic collapse before people wake up and realize uh, what is happening, right? So it's scary on one hand, uh, but on the other hand, it's needed. We need to feel the repercussions of endless money printing, um, everyone being complacent and just dependent on rescue programs and handouts, foreclosure, forbearances, uh, moratoriums, assistance with uh, loans, uh, freezing of loan payments, freezing of interest, um, pausing of utility bills, which we saw millions of people uh, have to take advantage of, you know, over the past couple of years here in the United States. All right. So I guarantee you that we will not get through this without feeling some sort of pain. And hopefully if we're prepared, if we know what's coming and we know exactly what's happening, we're going to be better prepared than most. Now, speaking of manipulation, what a wild week it was for the stock market, right? We saw all these sell-offs followed by recoveries and somebody with some pretty big pockets coming in and buying the dips. Now, supposedly the big sell-offs are because some just awful news, right? We have the next phase of the health crisis, you know, that was rolled out. We've got the, um, the inflation. They said one or, or two of the big sell-offs are because fears of inflation. Well, the fears of inflation haven't went away. Uh, the health crisis hasn't went away. In fact, there's, there's more things to start worrying about now. But yet we saw these buyers come in and buy these dips. Uh, who's buying these dips besides the Fed? Right? Is this any real investor with real money? Or is this just the Fed pushing buttons behind their trading desk and the plunge protection team? I mean, this uh, market, if you look at bad news affecting the markets, then the bad news is not just not going away. It's getting worse. So why does the market keep recovering? Now, it is a slight downtrend. Right, but based on the severity of this news that's been coming out, it should be a major, major sell-off. And you still see, um, you know, we're nowhere near the highs that we were at uh, back in early November. But uh, who knows with the way this market's being manipulated, we could go on to see all-time highs, even as you know, tens of millions. Of, you know, who knows how many more people are going to get sick, and the markets are still going to continue to climb. Uh, so what's it going to be? Half the country uh, has passed away, and the markets are still making new highs, like. Is there no news bad enough to cause the stock market crash? Well, apparently not. When you have the Fed behind the scenes, they could just push buttons and buy unlimited amounts of stocks, securities, bonds, unlimited quant quantitative easing. Um, this is all a huge manipulated uh, illusion is what it is. So thanks everybody for being here. We're going to wrap this up. Uh, have a good weekend. I may or may not be here tomorrow on Sunday. Either way, hope to see you back here very, very soon. Thank you very much, y'all. Bye now. Peace.